Hey, this is Brian Jones. I'm the host of the Everyday Science Show, and it's a treat to be back in the PSD TV studio. And we're going to do a show today about electricity, and we're concerned with one principle. What is electricity? Well, electricity is basically this. There's charges, and we'll talk about what charges are, and you have to set them in motion. You want to make them go from one place to another. How do you make that happen? Well, we're going to do a bunch of experiments to explore this, and I've got some folks to help me out with this. I've got a couple of junior broadcasters from Tavelli Elementary. I've got Claire and Madeline. All right. And you folks are junior broadcasters, but today you're going to be junior scientists. You ready to get to work? Yes. Let's do some experiments. And so here's what we're going to do. First off, your body is made up of what we call charged particles. They're electrons and other kinds of things. And they have this property called charge, OK? And when charges move, that's what we call electricity. That's a current. Now, to make charges move, Claire, you're going to be positive, OK? Yeah. So you're over here, and your hand is going to go on top of this ball. And you're now at a positive potential. You're uphill. You are going to be connected to the ground by holding on to the grounding spoon. And hold on to it with this hand right there. Go ahead and grab a hold of that with this hand right there. So now you're connected to the earth. You're at a low potential. So we have a high potential, a low potential. You're connected to the ground. You're connected to this plasma ball. And your hand is probably warming up a little bit. So charges want to go from high potential to low potential. They want to go from clear to Madeline. And what we're going to do is we're going to let them go from a high potential to a low potential through a light bulb. Grab a hold of the light bulb, and you grab a hold of the other side. Oh, and grab a hold of it. Get a good, there you go. And now the charges are flowing from a high potential to a low potential, and the electricity is actually flowing through your body. It goes in your hand, through you, into the light bulb, through the light bulb, into Madeline, and then into the spoon, and into the earth. Are we a human circuit? <laughs> I couldn't have said it better myself. You're a human circuit. This is spectacular. This is spectacular. And it's going from high potential to low potential. This is how electricity works. And then all those charges kind of go through the earth, and there's some ele electronics in there that lifts them up and then sends them back around for one more time. That's your circuit right here. It's the plasma ball to clear to the light bulb to Madeline to the spoon to the ground over to the plasma ball and back up and out the top. Is there a certain thing in our body that allows the electricity to run through? There is, actually. You're made up of basically water. Most of you are made of water, and the water inside you is salty. So you're a big bag of salty water, really, from an electrical standpoint. <laughs> and salt water is a really good conductor. What do you say we do another? So I'm going to reach for this device over here. And it's starting to make a little bit of a noise. This is, a, this is one that will make some noise. This is a very, very cool thing. This little ball makes a difference in potential. And you can see I've got a positive and I've got a negative. And Claire, I'm going to have you hold on to the spoon. So you're the positive person. You can hang on right here on the barrel spoon, grab a hold. And then Madeline, you're going to be the negative. And grab a hold of your other hand. There you go. So now you are a negative. You're at a positive, you're at a high potential, you're at a low potential. If I can connect the circuits from the high potential to the low potential, the ball will light up. And let's make this happen. Let's make another human circuit. And there it is. Awesome. There we go. Oh, yeah. And it lights up and makes sound. And now, you s we were talking earlier about circuit. And you said circuit was the same word as? Circle. Circle. And look, the charges are going from Claire through me to Madeline into the fork, into the ball, into the spoon, into Claire, into me, and they just keep going around the circle. And what happens is the ball raises them up to a high potential. They go to Claire and then they flow downhill through me into Madeline. And we can also just do a fingertip. Let's try this. We don't need very much connection. We are very, very good electrical conductors. I just need pinky. That's enough of a circuit to make it go. And if I break it, it stops. Break it here, it stops. It, it's kind of like a light switch. It's exactly like a light switch. As a matter of fact, here's your light switch. I just opened it. When I close it, this is exactly like a light switch. And that was, that was fantastic. That is exactly what you're doing. You're just breaking a circuit. I'm going to take this board 
and bring this board over, okay? And I have a pencil. And what's inside a pencil? We often call it a pencil lead, but it's not really lead. Graphite. 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 And actually, I have a rock right there. Claire, go ahead and pull that rock over. Okay? And let's go ahead and we can set that rock right here. And Madeline, I'm going to ask you to pull this thing over. This is a little device that's just like the energy ball we had before. If you go ahead and touch both of those things, it lights up. Mm -hmm because you're a conductor. And now we've made a little bit of a circuit. Touch, I want you to take this one, Claire. Madeline, I want you to take it, I want you to touch it to the rock. And let's see if the rock is a conductor. Go ahead and see. Yes! Yeah. And so it turns out graphite is an electric conductor. Mm -hmm. And this is just really a chunk of like pure, pure graphite. So would that mean um, pencil lead would be? Conductive. Would it be pencil that is conductive? What do you say we do an experiment to find out? Yeah. I got a pencil. Yes. And what I want to do is I want to sketch out a really, really fat line. Okay? So Madeline, go ahead and sketch out a really, really fat line. And I want it to be fat and I want that lots of graphite on the paper. Okay, let's test it. Now I want you to touch your washer to one side, you touch your washer to the other side. I'll hold up the ball and see what happens. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you actually, like, we drew an electric circuit. We drew it on the paper. And you have a really, really fat line. Think a skinny line would work? Maybe not as much, because there would be less graphite. Less graphite. Should we try it and see? Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Claire, it's your chance. Go ahead and sketch us a skinny line. Let's see what happens. Okay, and go ahead and take that washer and put it on this side. Clearly, you put yours on the other side, or Madeline put yours on the other side, nope. It's gotta be chubby, back to the chubby one. Let's see if it works. And now we're getting a circuit that's closed. And so we're getting electricity conduction through the graphite, which is kinda cool. So we just drew an electric circuit and all the charges are moving inside there. Now, if you looked at that, what actually happens as it works, is the graphite actually warms up a little bit. So there's some energy that goes into the graphite. And it's that energy which is the point that we want to talk about now because the whole point for making electric circuits is energy. If something, if charges can move in a material, we call that a conductor. If they can't move, we call it an insulator. You, are you a conductor or an insulator? A conductor. Okay, you're a conductor. And I think these wires are coated with plastic. Plastic, insulator, or conductor? Insulator. Insulator. That keeps us, you know, from contacting electricity. That's good. How about aluminum foil? Conductor or insulator? Conductor. 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 Now, go ahead and turn your cars over, and you'll see on the bottom, we took the batteries out, mm -hmm. and we put on a little brush in the back. So there's a little brush back here. And your car has a little brush, too. If you take that and set it down on the aluminum foil, that brush touches the aluminum foil, okay? So that connects to one side of the battery compartment. So now if we take a stack of batteries and a stick of back of batteries here, this is a low potential and it's connected to the aluminum foil. This one is my high potential. Oh, and there's a wire which is connected to the high potential. Oh yeah, oh yeah, and then, does your car still move when it's over there? Nope. Why does the car, go ahead and try it. Aluminum foil. There you go, there you go. The brush isn't touching the aluminum foil, it's touching the tablecloth, and is that a conductor or an insulator? An insulator. Oh yeah, so now I don't have the complete circuit, I don't have any electricity, and so I'm not turning the motor. So let's go ahead and, and make this go. So I got a high potential up here, at the top of the battery, and then there's a little brush which connects to the other side. There you go, and your car rolls down the thing. And let's try the blue one, and make that one go too. There you go, off the edge. Now there's something in town that works like this, where there's a wire that connects to something up in the air that's a high potential, and then there's low potential on the ground. And it's a car that rolls down the street. The trolley. The trolley. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that's been in town for, oh, gosh, 100 years. And 
it works just like that. There's a big wire overhead that's at a high potential, the ground's at a low potential, that makes charges flow through the streetcar, runs the motor. It's just like the little cars that we ran. It's just a little bit bigger. And that's the main point we wanted to make on this episode. That difference in potential sets the charges in motion. We had some demonstrations. We made some human circuits. We did some circuits with batteries and bulbs, some circuits with cars. The cars and, and graphite. graphite. Made a little a draw a circuit that we drew. But in each case, the lesson's the same. Charges flow from a high potential to a low potential. The final example of that is the trolley. It's the streetcar. And now we're going to take a look at how that actually works. It's a fascinating example of science in action, but also it's a cool piece of Fort Collins history. And that will bring this episode of Everyday Science to a close. I want to thank Claire, thank Madeline for joining me on this episode, and we'll see you later. We've seen some experiments in the studio that show us how electricity works, and now we're out and about at one of Fort Collins' favorite locations. This is the home of Fort Collins Streetcar. This is Bernie Car number 21. And I'm here with Roger Smith, who's one of the motormen. And before we talk about electricity, tell us a little bit about the history of this car. Well, this car is about 97 years old. The city um, started, uh, bought this car in 1918. So the city operated it until 1951. They charged five cents for uh, a fare, which was uh, not changed over the whole life of its car. Huh. But they began to lose money, and I think the bigger problem was they couldn't buy parts for it. So in 1951, this, uh, they abandoned the system, they put this car in the park. We got it in 1977 and restored it, and the rest is history. Wow. Wow, so it's got an age, kind of an older history and a more recent it's history. It's got two lives. It's yeah. Like, it's 20, it's 30 years into its second life now. Well, that's fantastic. It's a rolling museum. It's owned by the city museum and uh, we run it for free as volunteers. But it runs the same way that it did with electricity. With electricity. And for electricity, you have to have a place where there's a high potential, and then the current is going to flow through something, and then end up at a place where there's a lower potential. Exactly. And if you're going to do that with something that moves like this, you've got to have a moving uh, conductor. So the, the high potential is in the wire up above the track that goes all the way from here down to the t town. And um, I say here because this is where we generate the electricity. The pole uh, with a wheel on it, the wheel is called the trolley wheel, by the way, and that's where the name comes from, uh, picks up the electricity. It goes down the pole through the uh, wires in the car to the motors and um, through resi resistors that um, control the current and then through motors and back through the rail. The rail is the low potential and it returns the current uh, to the power supply. So the electricity is going from the wire, which is up above the trolley, and then basically through the car, and then ends up in the rails. That's the rail. our circuit. Right, and the wheels are rolling conductors, all, all four of them, to get the current back into the rail and, and back to the power supply. Now, the, you, you mentioned the word conductor, and another thing we talked about was conductors and insulators. Right. So the wire up here is a conductor, and the rails are a conductor, but there's insulators here as well. Oh yeah, we have insulators so that the, um, the hangers, which hold the wire up, are totally insulated from uh, not only the poles, which are holding them up, but then insulated from the ground, so there's no way that electricity can go anyway through, through those. And then there's insulation, of course, to isolate the conducting of the electricity in the car. The people in the car don't, don't have any exposure to the, to the current at all. Oh, fantastic. Just like in your house, you don't have an exposure to the current in your, it's uh, you know, feeding the plugs in the wall. And since this is a voltage of about 630 volts, you don't want to be touching that. You have to, to very carefully insulate it. Wow. Now, we looked at batteries in the studio that have a voltage of about one and a half volts. Mm -hmm. So this would be 420 batteries all stacked Something up. Something like that, yeah. So running this with a battery pack would be uh, a lot of batteries. Right. So it's a, it's a almost 100-year-old piece of rolling history. 
that works the same way as it did when it was first installed. That's right. See, like, we, we've known about electricity quite for quite a while now, but they were very clever in using it for streetcars. In fact, the, the, the basic idea is just is the same in, in principle as being used now for the light rail in Denver. And if somebody wants to ride this particular piece of rolling history, they can do that. Oh yes, every weekend uh, from May through September, uh, in the afternoons, Sundays and Saturdays, plus holidays if they occur during that time, uh, we run the car. Well, Roger, thank you for taking the time to talk with us and tell us a little bit about the technology and the history. And encourage your watchers and listeners to come and, and ride the car. So, come and ride the car, check out the history, check out the technology, think about the electricity, think about the science, and we'll see you next time on Everyday Science.